This episode of Around the Oval is brought to you by Todd Pennington with Revolution Mortgage. Ohio State fans, Alex Gleitman from Buckeye Scoop. Welcome back to another edition of Around the Oval brought to you by Todd Pennington with Revolution Mortgage. Today, we have a very special guest in 2021 offensive lineman and Ohio State commit, Donovan Jackson, coming to us all the way down in Texas. Donovan, thanks for joining the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing great today. You know, I'm very excited for this. Awesome. Well, you know, appreciate you you coming on. Ohio State fans definitely will want to hear from you. Uh, let's take a look back. We start the show. Let's take a look back and um, talk about your commitment to Ohio State. I know you made the visit uh, last fall. I think it was what, for the Penn State game? Yes. Yeah, and I know that that kind of was the visit that ultimately sealed the deal for you, but you decided to wait to announce a little bit. Um, I think it was about a little bit over a month later before you announced that you were going to commit to Ohio State. You had some great opportunities, obviously, um, you know, national type recruit from the state of Texas. All these schools wanted you. Why was it Ohio State for you in the end? For Ohio State, it really stood out to me, um, not only athletically, but as academically, because I want to go into sports management. And I think they have a great um, business program there at Ohio State. And obviously, athletically, with what Ryan Day has done and Coach Dud and just so little of time is really mind-blowing and I see myself fitting into that system and uh, getting where I need to go in the NFL. Yeah, absolutely and I know you have um, some family I believe it's in the what is it Cincinnati area. Um, yes the majority of my family is from Cincinnati. Yeah how big was that for you you know knowing that you did have family in you know about an hour hour and a half away from campus how, how big was that in the comfort part of, of your decision? Um, it wasn't too big of a factor in my recruitment. It just kind of sort of happened. But it, it is nice to know that uh, there always there's always family around me. So I'm not like a southerner stranded in Ohio. I do have family around me. Yeah, definitely. And um, when you talk about what you could bring to Ohio State on the field, I know you're a guy who could play multiple positions. Uh, you know, you, you definitely could play outside as we've seen at camps and, and your high school team, but some people also predict that you could be an excellent uh, interior offensive line uh, prospect. Where has Ohio State told you that they expect you to play along uh, the line and do you have a preference? Uh, I, I think I'll be playing interior at um, guard at Ohio State, but um, they, uh, they, they told me right now that that's still like a working theory. They don't quite know where they're gonna put me, but I just wanna get on the field, see some playing time. So wherever they tell me to go, I'm gonna work my hardest to be there. Yeah, Ohio State has a couple of really good interior offensive line pros prospects this year, or uh, draft prospects, I should say, this year in both Wyatt Davis and Josh Myers. Uh, I'm not sure how well you got to know either of those guys or how much you watch them, but how big is it for you knowing that Coach Stud has kind of developed these two guys and they're potentially uh, I, th I think Wyatt is pretty likely. Josh, I think, has a pretty good shot to be a first-round pick uh, in next next year's NFL draft if they choose to go. I, I watched Wyatt from his days at Bosco all the way up to Ohio State. And so seeing what Coach Dead has done for him in, in terms of development, um, it was one of the main factors for me because he develops his players into young men and to go on to the NFL to have successful careers. So I, I know that I have so much to improve on, and he – points out my fault saying this is where I can improve on and so I'm just looking forward to getting on campus and working with them more. Yeah you mentioned some things you need to work on. I, w tell everyone a little bit what do you feel you do well that's going to be a strength for you when you get to Ohio State and what are some of those things that you feel you do need to work on? What I do well is I work well in space. I feel like I have great feet in in terms of being a lineman so I know how to get out in space. I know I control my weight. Uh, I feel like I'm really explosive off the ball. That's when something I pride in. But something I need to work on is hand placement. Sometimes it gets a little shoddy where I put my hands. So I need to work on that and be a lot more uh, efficient with that. And uh, head placement where I put my head on the defensive lineman. Because if I get those things down, it makes my life easier. So getting – it's just the next step in the game of football to get the little things down so the hard things aren't uh, hard. Yeah, and, you know, you, you committed somewhat early. Um, you, you know, you weren't the first one in the class, but you were among the first of the group. And the class has picked up a lot of steam um, in, you know, the, the, I guess, eight months or so since you committed. You guys do have the number one recruiting class in the country. 
how does it feel to be a part of a group uh, that is, you know, right now and, and hopefully will be when, when it's all said and done, the top ranked group in the country, knowing that you have great players coming in alongside you? Yeah, I, I think I was the eighth commit, but um, all of us were, we're a very close knit family. You know, we have a giant group chat. We talk all the time. Uh, we we always know what we're doing. We always know what we're thinking. We're all very excited to get to Ohio State. So just having that class, because it's it's one thing to have a great class. But it's one thing to have a bunch of guys that are motivated to be successful in the college and winning national championships and winning conference championships. And that's what I think this class is ready to do. So I'm very excited to work with these guys. Yeah, and, and in talking with some of those guys, I know Kyle and Ben and Trevion, like – They've taken on a little bit of a leadership role in getting in some other prospects' ears and, and trying to get them to come on board. And then there's guys I've talked to, like Marvin Harrison, who's a little bit more, um, I, I don't want to say late, quiet, or anything like that, or shy, but he's a little bit more laid back in his approach. He's not going to be as aggressive as those guys on social media and things like that. How have you, you know, have you been a guy who's been out trying to recruit other great players? Have you kind of just been more of the the laid back type of guy what, what's been your approach in trying to get other guys to join the class with you uh I would say I'm, I'm right right in between what you just said you know I don't really hound guys because I know when I was getting recruited I hated when people do that I'm like this is my recruitment I don't need you telling me what to do with it but at the same time there are obviously guys I want to play with the guys I want in the locker room so I might like shoot them a text like once every other week and start a conversation and so we start building from there. And so there, there are guys I'm trying to get. And uh, hopefully they uh, make the right decision. But I'm, I'm just uh, having fun with it. Yeah, definitely. And who are, you know, if you don't mind saying, who are some of the guys that you're, you're trying to recruit and, and help get, you know, to kind of finish this class strong for, for Coach Day and the rest of this, the staff? Uh, the main one would have to be Tristan um, Leah. I would say. Tristan Lee, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's the main one. He's the one that I'm um, constantly like on because I need I need me a tackle. But um, there there are plenty of guys. You know, the the 2022 class is holding it down, so there's no need for us to do that. But uh, we're just you know trying to build up this great class. We know we have a couple spots that we still need, and so we're just trying to fill those spots. Awesome, and I you know I know you told me before we jumped on here that you're not able to enroll early. Uh, at your school. So you'll be coming to Ohio State, I guess, like next May at some point, uh, maybe yeah. maybe June. But, um, you know, w I guess high school seasons across the country are a little bit in flux. It seems like yours is in place uh, as we currently record this. Tell us a little bit about what's the plan, what's going on down there in Texas? Uh, like, what do they have as far as your schedule outlook for the upcoming season? Well, you know, this is a Texas football, you know, football's the last thing to go. It doesn't matter if we have a pandemic or a national disaster, we're still playing football. But uh, for us, there are a lot of safety precautions in, in place to make sure everyone's going to be safe. Um, there, my school, we have to like um, wear a two-ply gator mask an over our mouthpiece, and we have to like wear a face shield on top of that. So it's a lot of um, per, uh, things in place to make sure we're all safe. And so hopefully we all get uh, get through this season healthy and uh, in one piece. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely fingers crossed here that you guys get to not only play, but finish out your season. Uh, on that note, uh, I'm sure as you heard and the rest of the country heard, uh, about a, a week ago or so, the Big Ten made the decision to postpone its, its football season from the fall to the spring. That's the plan right now. We'll see if that happens. When, that, when you heard the news of that, that Ohio State wasn't going to be playing this fall, what was your reaction? Well, my initial reaction was that I didn't like it at all. You know, seeing how their schools still playing, I thought maybe the, the Big Ten should have planned a little more or maybe talked it over a little more. But I don't know too much on the topic to say anything like that. But um, I understand why they did it. And I, I talked to the coaching staff about it um, in great length. And they, they, like, told me why they did it. But I wish they um, – probably took the players' consideration a little more because they're the ones that are playing, I would say. But I understand that it's a major health risk in what it poses to the young men's health and stuff like that. But I just wish they would think it over a little more. Yeah, I think everyone, you know, it's, it's very clear both the coaches wanted to, co wanted to play, the players wanted to play. It seems like the parents are behind at least them having the option. You know, you can opt out or you can play. And 
it seems mm. like that really wasn't taken into consideration, which is a little disappointing. Uh, we'll see if, you know, some of the, the movement by, by Justin Fields and some others, you know, getting people to sign a petition and, and all that stuff, if it has any impact on getting them to reconsider. But I guess my question to you is a lot of the reaction from fans is that, you know, this would be negative um, for Ohio State or other Big Ten schools when it comes to recruits. As a highly ranked recruit, A, did it have – does this – does this make you second think your commitment to Ohio State at all? And B, do you think that, that something like this could have a negative impact on, on recruits that Ohio State's trying to get into the class? Uh, for me, it doesn't have an effect on my recruitment at all. You know, I chose Ohio State for a reason. I plan to play for Ohio State. But um, I see how it can have a negative effect on others recruiting. I've seen plenty of decommits lately from the Big Ten. But um, if – since I'm in the class of 2021, you know, obviously I feel for the 2020 guys, but hopefully it's fixed by the time I get up there. So I'm not quite too worried about it. But the, um, there are schools in the other conferences that are coming out saying, hey, you know, we're still playing and stuff like that. But I'm like, hey, I'm just committed to Ohio State for now. Yeah, I was going to ask you, like, we, I've heard some guys, the SEC schools and Big 12 were on them, like, ASAP once that news came out being like, you know, come to the come to the Big Twelve, come to the SEC. The Big Ten's never going to play. Like all this stuff. Have you gotten a lot of that? Uh, I probably have. I I just don't really look at all that stuff. I I, I see it pop up on my phone. I just kind of swipe it away. You know, it doesn't. I don't really need that right now. Like I'll I'll worry about that if that happens, but I doubt that will happen. Yeah, I tend to agree, and that's why, for me, like I understand, you know, you want you want to make sure the conference you're playing in has your back. But I didn't really understand 2021 guys being too concerned about it. Um, number one, if you're going to enroll early, if they do play in the spring, you might have the chance to play in that season, which is awesome. Yeah. And then number two, as as you said, as long as it's back in the fall, who really cares? Not not much is different for your guys' class. So, it was interesting for me to hear some people really be concerned about that. I do think. It could be used against uh, Ohio State and, and other Big Ten schools in recruiting a little bit. But at the same time, if these schools end up canceling or something, God forbid, really bad happens, it could also be a positive that the Big Ten was looking out for its student athletes first. Um, so, so it will be interesting to see. But, um, you know, I, I, I guess has – have you guys, is that something you guys have talked about as like a class and like a group text or anything like that? I'm, I'm sure like – as soon as that news broke, there was a lot of chatter in there. But it, what, what's kind of been the buzz amongst the rest of the, the commits in the class uh, regarding, um, you know, the cancellation and, and, and the Big Ten not playing this fall? Uh, for, the, for the most part, no, no one was really concerned about it. We were all talking about what we're going to put in our um, dorm rooms and stuff like that. <laughs> we were talking about what, where the first place we're going to eat when we, we all get on campus. But, you know, all of our – majority of our guys are all focused on – getting to Ohio State and contributing early. So we're all like headstrong tunnel vision to Ohio State. So we're working on what we can improve on so we can contribute to the team. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks, Donovan, for joining. Last question here. Let's move away from football. Let's get the Ohio State fans to get to know you a little bit off the field. When you're not playing football, tell us what Donovan Jackson's like. What does he like to do with his spare time when he's not working out or playing football? Oh, uh, man, I don't have a lot of free time these days. <laughs> But um, I would say just hang out with friends. I'm a major people person, so I like hanging around other people. Um, they give me energy. But uh, just hanging out, I would say. You know, wor working out a lot. Like I said, I don't have a lot of free time these days, but just working out. I play some video games, not too much. But that's Donovan Jackson. You know, he's tunnel vision. He works out, trains, because he knows what he wants. So. That's awesome, man. Well, thanks again for joining the show. We really appreciate your time. We're looking forward to seeing you, hopefully, this, this high school season and then getting you out to Columbus and watching you the next, you know, three, four, maybe five years uh, playing for the Buckeyes. Yes, sir. This episode of Around the Oval was brought to you by Todd Pennington with Revolution Mortgage. If you've been thinking about refinancing or buying a house, check out our sponsor, Todd Pennington with Revolution Mortgage. They offer low rates for refinancing and home purchase loans, including first-time home buyer programs, down payment assistance, and cash-out home equity loans. Check out revolutionmortgage.com slash tpennington.